C Hill NYC asks, what is the strangest thing Greg has ever eaten? I've eaten a, I've eaten a donut. Sounds normal, right? Right. Topped with a miniature tarantula. Hey, my name is Anthony O'Connell. I'm a man with a high voice and a podcast. We do a feast or pass, rate it one to feast, great dining experiences, and more. Listener questions. How does Devour Power stay in shape? What's the strangest thing Greg has eaten? How did Greg and Rebecca get into food blogging? Italians leaving mean comments on food content. Unpopular food opinions. Greg doesn't like blue cheese or olives. Is it rude to eat your food before everyone at the table gets their food? Devour Power burger and fried chicken pop-ups. Recipe book and more. What's up, buddy? What's going on? How's it going? <laughs> Pretty Thanks good. for having me. Yeah, of course. Thank you for doing it. You're the you're one of the food gods out there. So I had to get your opinion on some stuff here. <laughs> yeah, right. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Sea urchin, feast or pass? Sea urchin. So is that that's uni, right? It is. Yeah, and it's fun fact. Did you know that what you're eating is their reproductive organs? Uh, no, I didn't. Thank you for ruining all seafood <laughs> for me, though. When it comes to sea urchin, I'm gonna say pass because I've had it a few times, and every single time I thought that was gonna be the one moment that I was gonna end up liking it because they say it's an acquired taste, but I mean, how many times do you have to try it to make it an acquired taste before it's just, <laughs> you just think it's awful, before you just give up on it? I'm gonna say no to sea urchin. I know my wife really loves it. She's been trying to get, but you know, the less I eat of it, the more she can eat of it. So win-win. Dude, I'm with you, man. I've tried it several times and it's like super salty and tastes like the sea, I guess, but- It literally just tastes like, like what bad fish t- tastes like <laughs> it tastes like the taste of bad it, it comes in a spooky little shell like you shouldn't eat that spiky spooky no. thing <laughs> no it's strange yeah <laughs> i mean maybe if they like gave it to you like that that would be cool but usually they give it to you like on a like as a as a roll right or like on rice or something like that exactly. maybe if they gave you something to play with and you take it out of it or whatever that would be kind of fun you how know? do you feel about other like a, like a salmon roe do you like a salmon roe oh yeah I'm pretty much game for all the rest of sushi and I'm like not a picky eater at all. I'll eat kind of anything. I mean, if you had sea urchin right now for me, I would still eat it. (laughs) (laughs) I would make a face, but I would definitely eat it because, you know, food is life. That's a big fact. So now we move one to feast. It's like one to five, but we say feast for branding. Okay. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Of course. uh, Pancakes, one to feast. I would say pancakes, I would give it a a one. I don't like, uh, I don't like pancakes. I don't really eat. I mean, I don't really like breakfast food that much with the exception of like a bacon, egg and cheese or something like that. Mm -hmm. Both Rebecca and myself don't really like mushy bread. We're like, you know, not give us like French toast, pancakes, something like that. It just kind of ends up like mush. And I'm like, all right, I don't know. I need some like, I need some meat. I'm definitely more of a meat eater than a, than a bread eater. Now I agree. Now that's why I'm more of a waffle guy. Like for me, a pancake's probably like a two. Yeah. I would say, I would say waffle over Uh, any pancakes or like French toast or something like that. Absolutely. I've never, ever been blown away by a pancake, but I have had some like Belgian waffles, for example, that were like truly mind blowing. Ooh, nice. Good to know. (laughs) You live a good life. uh, You know, I do what I can. (laughs) (laughs) How about Chipotle one to feast? Chipotle, I'm going to go feast for sure. Nice. Supposedly there's like a bunch of menu hacks at Chipotle too, which I love. I love that like a giant restaurant corporation can have weird menu hacks that like everybody knows about, you know, you go and you ask for a quesarito apparently, and they like put, they like wrap cheese around the burrito. That's a big win. (laughs) You kidding me? (laughs) It's the fact that that's like hidden and you can actually, uh, I don't know. I just, I just really like the the style of Chipotle. I feel like you can have a really unhealthy meal and you can have a really healthy meal. You know, you can like sub the carbs. You could just get like uh, veggies and then you can get like chicken, you know, it's relatively healthy which is good. So it's kind of like favors all of the uh, the diets out there with the exception of vegetarians, probably. <laughs> I don't know, there's probably veggies there. Yeah. Right. So speaking of diets, I asked my followers to give me some devour power questions. And I would say probably half of them were, ask them how Rebecca and Greg stay in such good shape. And I know that you've talked about <laughs> it before, but could you please just- I feel like we that? have talked about this before, you and I. Yeah. You know? so, so let my listeners know, how do Greg and Rebecca stay so fit? Okay. Well- it's, it, you know, it's a plethora, it's a plethora of things. We are constantly moving around. I mean, we live in New York City. We're always like walking around or like running to the next spot where we try to work out every single day. So we'll like either go on a run separately. We don't really work out together because we do everything else together. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, we'll like go on a run. Um, I like to skateboard or longboard. I like to bike. We, you know, we'll go to the gym. We'll lift some weights, stuff like that. Um, when it comes to this kind of food that we're eating and you see all over Devour Power, 
sometimes we eat it all, but I would say a lot of the time we're just taking, taking a few bites. We'll take it home. We'll eat the rest later. We try not to eat too much in one sitting. So we'll kind of eat everything in moderation or we like share it with friends. So all the stuff that you see, we're not just eating all of it. Um, unfortunately, some of it goes to, sometimes the food goes to waste, but we try our best not to, you know, waste, waste any food. And then when we're eating at home, for the most part, we just eat really healthy, you know, lean meats, veggies, fruit, whole grains, trying again, trying to never overeat and trying not to eat too much before bed, limited amount of sugar. Like we don't, we don't have a sweet tooth. That's a big thing too. We don't really, I mean, every now and then we'll have like a donut, but that's like once a week, if not once a month. Luckily the food that we actually like is the food that we that gets a lot of recognition and engagement on our social media pages so we don't have to stray too far from that you know yeah it's like you can eat fried chicken and burgers and tacos and stuff <laughs> like that and we actually really like it and you know if you eat that kind of food in moderation it's it's not really that bad you know along with a balanced diet and exercise and everything you know what i think you could do i think you're the king of engagement like you're really good at you and Rebecca both are very good at making good quality, engaging content. Well, I think you'd, oh yeah, of course. I think it would be fun to see you folks. And I know it's off brand for the main devour power page, but have you ever considered doing like a devour power health and you try to make like oatmeal look snazzy? Like I think you could pull it off. <laughs> this is, this is me making oatmeal. Just like, okay, pour it, I pour it in overhead shot, beautiful pan overhead yep. shot, pour the, pour the oatmeal, pour Slow water, motion. pour water. <laughs> Slow mo, slow mo water shot. Some of the water spills out, but I just like clean it up with a towel. Put it in the microwave. Mm -hmm. bing, bing, bing. Two minutes. Bring Viral. it out. <laughs> not, no, it's not over yet. Okay. <laughs> and then you open up the drawer. We don't have like a spice rack. It's just like a drawer, and the, all the like spices like fall out every single time I open the drawer. And then I grab some cinnamon and I just top it on there. That's it. Nice. It's over. That's yeah. it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's always just like sticks to the bowl. It's never right. It's like it's so hot and then just gross. Yeah. How do you like your oatmeal? My Would you oatmeal. rather have it more lumpy or more liquidy? I don't know. I hate oatmeal, but I, oh. but I eat it. I, I eat it just for like energy. Like it's not food to me. It's just, I just, it gets me like walking. It's like the <laughs> gruel on the matrix. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I feel like I'm a, a cafeteria every time. C Hill NYC asks, what is the strangest thing Greg has ever eaten? I've eaten a, I've eaten a donut. Sounds normal, right? Right. Topped with a miniature tarantula. What? <laughs> so here, so here's the thing. This uh, this crazy chef uh, that I know has a used to have a place called Sugar and Water in Astoria. His name's his name's Francis. He's a master chef. He's like he's the man. He was like, hey, I'm I'm working on like a tarantula donut for Halloween. If you want to like come swing by and like check it out, and I was like, yeah, that sounds good. I was just thinking the donut was going to be in the shape of a tarantula, right. and it was but it was going to be that like. Who would ever think that there was going to be a, a real tarantula on the donut? Not me. Because he's like, a, yeah, I just thought, because you think donuts, you think like crazy, crazy like shapes and stuff like that. And he just uh, he handed it to me and I still was just like, it looks a lot like a tarantula, like a mini, it looks a lot like a spider, but I was like, maybe he's just really good at what he does. And he's just, he just knows how to make that donut, oh <laughs> mini God. tiny disgusting donut look like, and then I ate it and um, I absolutely hated it. Like I you know uh, like crunchy? you can imagine it was crunchy it was salty it was like it tasted like dirt Ugh. and uh yeah it wasn't <laughs> great but I ate the whole thing and it was a great experience and I would say it's on par with sea urchin yeah dude that's that's really wild that's stuff like <laughs> before you took your first bite did you know that it was a real spider or you before you took your first bite you were like this is probably decorative uh no he told me like right before he was just like, I don't know if you're understanding what this is right now, because you seem like you're really like you like nothing's wrong with you. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, Jesus Christ. That's wild, man. There And there it is. Um, trying to think of anything else. I've had, I've had ants before war like worms and, and stuff like that. Like with mezcal, you know, they give you like the little ants and like yeah. the worms to eat. Uh -huh. um, Cause I love mezcal. So. You Would you try that. anything you think, like literally anything that's edible and I not poisonous? Do you think you'd try it once? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's cool. I mean, like I, you know, I, I live my life, like my, one of my favorite role models, uh, Anthony Bourdain, I mean, RIP, but he was, it was like, live your, you know, your, your life's like a roller coaster, man. Just like literally enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? When it <laughs> comes to food, it's, it's just a beautiful thing to be 
in the world of food. There's so many different cultures. There's just so much to learn all the time. And it's like, it's just amazing to be a part of this. Absolutely. And that actually segues nicely into the the next and final question. Uh, Someone named Rally Ragnarok asks, how did Greg and Rebecca get into food blogging? So uh, that's a good question. About eight years ago, actually maybe nine years ago. Hey, just wanted to say thank you so much for listening so far. If you're liking it, please subscribe, tell a friend. If you're loving it, please give us a five-star review. Uh, Rebecca and I started dating and we started going out to eat all the time. And we quickly realized how much we both loved food and, and drink. So we decided to, I, I always wanted to start a blog of some sort. I always like, I actually just went through my journal the other day and I saw all these like ideas of different blogs I wanted to start. And they were all just like the weirdest things. And I'm so glad I did so glad I chose this one. But we decided to start a blog. And at the time it was called Meals and Reels. So the, it was R-E-E-L-S, like, uh, uh, like movies. Okay. So it was basically restaurant reviews um, or like visits. We don't really like to do reviews. It was restaurant visits and then movie reviews in, into one. And it like wasn't even on Instagram. It was just an actual like blog, which is almost like unheard of now. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's crazy. Um, and then that started picking up traction once we transferred it over to Instagram because it was, you know, food based. So anything with pictures. And then after maybe like a month of doing meals and reels and like the movie reviews, we just got a lot of people saying like, what's up with these movie reviews? Like just show the food. <laughs> what, what the hell, what are you talking about? Uh, Cause I was like reviewing strange movies, you know cause I went to school for film. Cause it, that's a, another one of my passions. But um, so then we changed the name to Devour Power. We started a whole media marketing company. We work with restaurants. We like to create content for ourselves, et cetera. We both quit our jobs about four years ago now. And yeah, it's great. Dude, <laughs> Devour Power is such an amazing name. Like it's just- Thanks. Yeah, like it kind of- I still, I, I still and... remember the, the day. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Somebody commented, uh, so I posted a, a pizza the other day and it was, it was pasta on the pizza. And mm-hmm. it's like, we created it with this place called East Village Pizza. And the Italians get so angry. They do. With this, with this, when you put, when you mix pasta on pizza, so angry. In fact, that the next post I put up, it was just still a bunch of comments about the last post that I put up. They weren't even over it yet. They weren't, they were not over it yet at all. And this one guy was like, you should change your name to destroy, destroy power instead of devour power because you destroy cultures. Ugh. And all I, I just commented and said, that's, it doesn't rhyme. doesn't work. <laughs> Dude, man. But other than that, it would like, I would change it for sure. It just doesn't rhyme, man. Yeah. Sorry, man. I'm totally on board with it. Like I just, but yeah, if you can think of anything else, I'll definitely change the name just for you. It's funny. It's funny. Like not to paint with a broad brush here, but in my experience, Italians are very passionate about their food and they get so offended so easily. (laughs) Like it makes sense. I love it. (laughs) I, I love that they're passionate. I love the culture, but I mean, you know, we, you and I both love comedy. It's just like, it's, it's so comedic like because (laughs) because there's no there's there's such a language barrier there too Uh that they like can't a lot a lot of it like they can't understand the sarcasm in our language (laughs) so it's just like you try to be a little sarcastic and then they just like you know they write something in 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 italian and just assume that they hate you i posted this carbonara and an italian dude wrote in italian that his grandmother's spinning over in her grave to which mm-hmm. i responded in english hey man tag some of your friends so they can also hate this and then he literally tagged his friends and he, was like, <laughs> <laughs> he was like tagged like five people and he's like look at this american idiot and i'm like hey dude i'm going up man free clout thank you so that's much that's another thing man all all of these all the hate brings more followers and brings it it brings more engagement and everything it's it's crazy it, it really, really is. is. I mean, that's that's how we've gained a lot of our following is because we, you know, we we post a lot of crazy, weird food that people are like, that's too much. But you get a couple hundred people saying that's too much and then tagging their friends and stuff, which is ridiculous. It is. What would you say yeah. is the most uh, polarizing dish you've ever posted? Because I have an idea. My guess is it's probably your cotton candy bean burrito was probably pretty polarizing. Yeah, or that maybe was one 100%. Of the East Village. It. Okay, cool. No, that was 100%. It, it was, uh, yeah, it was this place in Las Vegas called, uh, forget the name now. No, Creamberry, Las Vegas. And they make a whole cotton candy into a burrito. And then they stuff it with like, all bunch of candy and bunch of like weird crazy stuff 
and then they put ice cream in it, like different colored ice cream, obviously like cotton candy ice cream, stuff like that. Then they wrap it in burrito, cut it in half, open it. And uh, I wasn't, I was, you know, we just went there because we were intrigued about what it would look like. And yeah. I mean, I had a bite of it and I was like, it's, this is the strangest thing I've ever taken a bite out of. <laughs> like, but I would still eat, I would eat that over the tarantula and the sea <laughs> That makes sense. That, yeah. You know what? Yeah. Tough, but fair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so do you have any unpopular food opinions? Like for example, myself, I don't really like sour cream. I like a flavored sour cream, but just straight up sour cream, big pass mm. for me. Do you have any unpopular food opinions? Like Guy Fieri doesn't like eggs. That kind of. <laughs> exactly. Or like, <laughs> Which is I have just a friend, the strangest thing to me. I have a friend who claims that he doesn't like pizza. And I'm like, you're just trying to be cool. There's no just way that's pizza. true. He just wrote off all pizza. Yeah. I'm like, you don't like thick crust, thin crust, deep dish, different toppings, you know, flatbreads, nothing. He's like, no. Nope. That's wild. I think he just wants to be cool and like that's like yeah I think yeah yeah little hipster I don't like olives and I hate blue cheese blue cheese I think is that's definitely I'm actually shocked by that because you and Rebecca love chicken wings so much to hear you say you don't like blue cheese I'm I'm shocked Rebecca loves blue cheese are you a ranch guy or you know I'm a ranch guy okay I mean like if the blue cheese isn't too chunky I'm all in well not all in like I'll I'm like like half one foot in when it comes to uh the really chunky blue cheese that kind of tastes like how feet smell I'm yeah not, i'm not in it Fair enough doesn't it do you, can you understand that that uh that concept because yeah. people can't understand it tastes to me blue cheese <laughs> tastes like how feet smell well i had a french cheese that smelled like feet but tasted amazing i forget the name of it but it was like a real oh well, you're gooey. just yeah, that's yeah, it literally just, smelled uh, like laundry <laughs> <laughs> you're just uh you're just kinky man yeah, dude, I'm a freak nasty. <laughs> so let me ask you this. You eat out a lot. And um, I was talking with my buddy about this the other day. <laughs> Is it rude to eat your food before everyone gets their food? Uh, depends on who you're with. If you're if you're in a formal setting with family, it's rude. Unless they say it's okay. Yeah. Unless they're like, yeah, go ahead. No, 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 no. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then you can do it. But uh, no, if you're just with your friends or whatever, no, fuck that. Just... Yeah. Can I swear? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, fuck that. Definitely not. Now what if so you're, you're not waiting? I mean, if my, fr- if like my friend said, Hey, wait for my food, I'd be like, I would eat the, I would make it a mission to eat the whole thing before his food comes out. And plus like, I would argue talking about <laughs> your friend is rude for requesting you to wait. Like my food has to be cold and then you get your food and it's scalding hot and mine's cold. That's that's, that's it. You get it. <laughs> so you get I, it. you're married. So this doesn't really apply, but just hypothetical. What if you're on a first date? Definitely rude. I feel like you got to wait for your first date, right? You're on a date. Uh, yeah, definitely wait on your first date. <laughs> or you can you can just do it just for you know just as a test to like see like a power just, move to see yeah it all. just to see what's just see how the, what the reaction is yeah <laughs> um and then you can but there's no way of justifying that afterwards so it's kind of like you're you're already uh, on thin ice. Dude, I'm willing to blow a date for a bit. Next time I go on a date, I'm just going to eat my food right away. Hopefully mine comes first <laughs> and I'll just eat it. Yeah, who cares? It's just, it's science. It is, man. So in your opinion, what do you think makes a great dining experience? All right. So for us, we were all about the, you know, the, the casual type of dining experiences. Um, I mean, right now it's kind of tough, obviously, because we don't really get a lot of dining experiences, but I can, I can somewhat remember what it used to be like <laughs> <laughs> throwback Thursday yeah right so yeah I mean all right so you walk in and it's this nice it's this nice place good ambiance there's uh no TVs no TVs I mean not even one not even Purist, like, I love it no nothing there's some there's some nice paintings even they're in pictures that it, even even if they're from Ikea I'm, I'm cool with it you walk in the host or the hostess is happy I mean just happy to see you genuinely happy Love that. Um, they at, they say we're okay. Yeah, come this way. And then they say, instead of saying right here, they say, pick wherever you would like. Oh, that's and then I'm true. and then oh, and then they lean in for a kiss. No, just <laughs> and then uh, and then we sit where we sit where the best lighting is because we're weird. We're we're crazy uh, food picture takers. And then the food comes out beautifully, quick, and it's warm and and gooey and Instagrammable. Oh yeah. Gotta love it. But get this. Yes. We love the place so much that we don't actually take any pictures because we want to keep it for ourselves. Whoa. Yeah. That's insane. Mm. <laughs> you know, what's funny is when I try and to then Rebecca that, and I kiss <laughs> <laughs> over the table. <laughs> I always try to um, 
pretend that I'm going to do that, but I'm such an addict that I'll take photos, even if I'm not going to post them. I literally, I think I have to take photos of my food. Mm. Like it's a problem. Yeah. I, I, I think I always take one, like we usually try to not work on the weekends. Uh-huh. So, I mean, we obviously we eat on the weekends, but we don't do like, dev- you know, devour power and stuff on the weekend. So, you know, we'll, we'll go out to like a bar or a restaurant or something and I'll get the food, but I'll just snap like one terrible picture just for like a memory, you know? <laughs> yeah. And that's it. And Rebe- but yeah, Rebecca, like, yeah, Rebecca does the same thing. That's it's cool, like yeah. when we're working, we're working when we're, cause I mean, cause we're a couple and we've been doing this for eight years. It's like at the beginning, it was really hard to figure out like how we were going to separate work from like, you know, hanging out and having fun. So now it's like, we're either in work mode or we're not. It's like, we're going to a place to do work or we're going to a place to sit back, have a drink and just just chill was it hard to find that balance no but it was it was definitely necessary it's it it was just necessary especially you know work working from working for ourselves all the time um trying to find trying to find the balance it was just necessary to keep like our head leveled and everything when it comes to getting work done having like the correct amount of downtime um stuff like that like i mean pretty much for the most part at like 6 p.m every single day we're done like we start watching TV, smoke weed, whatever, nice. <laughs> like just chill. Yeah. <laughs> That's it's awesome. Great. Yeah. It's good. It, it, it's good to get that, to get that flow. And the, I like I that mean, sometimes so- we lose it, but then it, you know, it, it always comes back. I like that you're disciplined enough to stop. Like you're not a workaholic. You, you found a good work life. Oh, I'm definitely awesome. a workaholic. I have to stop. If, if I don't, I mean, yeah, if I don't, I'll just, I won't sleep. I'll just keep, I'll just drink coffee into the night. I'll go on like a three day bender of just like creating content. I'll be like, I'll just jump into Final Cut, like literally my head, my body will just jump in. Dude. I'll just be editing outside of my body. Isn't it so fun when you get in the editing zone, like you're just working on a video and literally everything disappears and you're just like sucked into the zone. Like that's the it's best. crazy. My favorite feeling is when you're film you're filming something at a restaurant and you're like, oh, I think I think it'll be an okay video, whatever. And then you bring it into the like final and you bring it into your editing software and you're like the way that it's coming together, you're just like, oh my God, like this is the way that he like smeared that cream cheese. <laughs> yeah, like, dude, oh totally. my God. <laughs> and then you could become like physically attracted to the person that was spreading that cream cheese. No, I'm just kidding. It's, no it's graphic, dude. Totally. I get it. Mm-hmm, I'm on board. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Just behind the scenes, man. Just I normal had... behind the scenes. stuff. <laughs> we had one of the, I had one of the best meals ever with you when we went on the lobster fest a couple years Ooh, ago. Yeah, and I always had... think back to that, man. That in Philadelphia, it's dude, such, so fun. So fun. Infinite lobster rolls. So now that you have your burger pop-up, could you tell us a little bit about how that came to be? Oh, yeah. Um, so we were touring around with the idea of like starting some sort of a concept. We knew we didn't want to start an actual restaurant because of the overhead and just, I mean, so much work. We don't have time to be there and train staff and stuff like that. It's just like mind-boggling that that people, and, and impressive that people can actually do that. <laughs> we just, I, I can't. So we partnered up with, one of my favorite restaurants in our neighborhood, Williamsburg, Brooklyn, it's a restaurant called The Bedford. We're doing a concept called Devour Burgers, and we have five different burgers, but they're all like smash burgers. So we basically combined our love for like In-N-Out with like our own, you know, flavors. So we have like a a Devour sauce that's on every single burger. Um, One of the burgers has like guac and chips and and pickled Um. peppers on there. Yeah, I'm just getting, getting hungry just thinking about it. It's and it's good. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's available like indefinitely there. We, we actually started to devour fried chicken as well Whoa. at another, at another place called Ornella's in Astoria, Queens. Uh, again, there's five different fried chicken sandwiches, one like classic one, and then four other like kind of crazy ones. It's doing really well. People seem to really like it. Uh, hey. You know, there's a lot of taste testing involved, so I didn't think otherwise. We're also talking about doing a devour mac and cheese pretty soon and hopefully like devour sandwiches yeah it's just it's just fun like the you know when when I quit my job I was just really looking forward to like just being as creative as possible when it comes to creating content when it comes to the business when it comes to how we make money we don't want to just be like complete sellouts and be like yeah go visit Burger King every single day (laughs) um I mean, we would. Oh yeah, I would Burger definitely King. sell out. Yeah. I always I mean, tell what? people I would 100% sell out. And you're a liar if you wouldn't. I don't believe you. If, if some brand I mean, is dude, like- we've done we've done all those. Ads. We've done Burger King. We've done McDonald's. We've done all that stuff. It's like, it's great, and we'll and we'll do it again because like, I mean, 
people people need to know about that stuff you know not everybody in the world can visit the bedford and get our burgers or visit like you know not everyone has access to artisanal fancy beef and fancy yeah burgers. like some people yeah. just have fast food and you know I, I think you should showcase everything and i think it's really great that you do thanks man and yeah same to you so here's my question about the business my fear with having a pop-up or doing your devour power food business model is you have to have a lot of trust in the restaurants like if say your your items are selling Mm. you know maybe they're not going to tell you that they're selling like you that do you find any challenges in that are you saying when it comes to the restaurant like the restaurant might might hide it or something like that yeah exactly like how do you know for certain that they're being honest like you just built such a great relationship with them that you oh trust for sure them? i guess it's a little bit of both of uh being definitely having trust in them and being friends for a while and two uh having access to their uh books <laughs> to their records okay cool so i mean <laughs> so I, I guess like we don't books. really but honestly we don't we don't even check it if we had any sort of you know theory that something was off then we might then we might check it but i don't know it's we also not really totally doing it for the money so you know just i have a lot of trust in people so i just hope to god that they wouldn't <laughs> they wouldn't do anything like that but if it happens it happens you know you move on from it it's I mean, it's not like we can't just take the concept to another restaurant if they would ever do that, but I definitely don't see them doing that whatsoever. Um, That's cool. Yeah, yeah. We, you know, you know, when you like meet meet some restaurant owners and you're just like, man, I would love to do some business with you. <laughs> like, yeah, totally. You're very, you're passionate. You know, you you love food. You love you love what we do. You know, it's mutually beneficial. That's what I found in both of these places that we're doing our pop ups. Have you talked about this or thought about maybe having your own standalone place? I know it's a crazy time in our our life right now, but yeah. would you have a brick and mortar location like a Devour Power? Like, because I could picture like almost like a Devour no. Power food court where you have like four <laughs> you have four ideas in one space. Oh man, yeah, that would we, be sick. Um, like a timeout market kind of thing. Exactly. That would be uh that would be awesome. I just think logistically it's just not not in our cards. I think I mean maybe someday, you know, I'll never say no to, you know, may, maybe in the future, but I'm just thinking of like I mean, maybe if I was on Mr. Beast level, like, you know, he has like the burger, the whole burger restaurant. Yeah. That he but I mean, he's doing it very smart, right? Cuz he has one permanent location and the rest of them are just ghost kitchens I'm, I'm pretty sure i haven't looked too much into it but that's that's very smart to do very very smart i i would be down for not franchising but just expanding devour burgers to be in, included in more at more restaurants and stuff but i don't know we're fine <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean it's like yeah. it's to, it's really not all about the money to us at all i'm we're just so happy to be able to do what we what we do to provide to just give all these food recommendations to our followers that actually like are interested in what we're doing. And, and it, I don't know, it's, it's just nice. It's a breath of fresh air from, you know, working for somebody else and all that stuff. <laughs> Dude, it's incredible. So tell us about, you have a book coming out. Is this recipes or recommendations or both? What kind of book you coming out with? Well, I guess it's a, re it's a recipe book for sure, but I guess it would be recommendations as well because all of the recipes are, recipes from our favorite locations in New York City, in New York City, like proper. So any of the five boroughs, but all of the, these places we like highly recommend their entire menu, you know, not only just this one item. Um, a lot of the places like made one item just for this book, which is, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, every, every single restaurant that we, that we had in this book was so excited to be a part of it. <laughs> uh, I think, I think that everyone is going to love it, you know, when, they, when they buy it, I think, I think that, the recipes aren't too daunting by any means. I think they're all of them are devour worthy. I mean, you can get Fedorov's uh, cheesesteak on there that I know you've had. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. That's a phenomenal. <laughs> it's so good, dude. Yeah, yeah, you and me are cheesesteak guys. <laughs> Heck yeah. So, was it hard to write a book? Like, did you, was it just you and Rebecca? Did you hire a ghostwriter as well? Like, how was we that? Had, process? We, we had a, um, we have an editor, Douglas Tratner. We had an amazing, so it, the book is through uh, Page Street Publishing. We have an editor, Douglas Tratner, and we have a photographer, Ken, that, uh, I mean, the team was just amazing. When it comes to writing, when it came to writing the book, I honestly am not the best writer. Uh, my brain's too scattered for that. <laughs> uh, Rebecca is phenomenal. She can like sit down and just like, you know, do it all with the help of the editor. It came together just perfectly. I'm like, we're so excited about how it came out. We don't actually have a physical copy yet, which is annoying, but we'll get it in April. We're beyond thrilled. It, 
it's weird because it, it takes so long for this publishing. We had no idea how long it would take for the publishing, but yeah, it takes like six months to get everything together. It's we've been working on it for like over a year now. Congrats, man. That's so it's incredible. Crazy. Thanks. I appreciate Who'd have it. thought, you know, meals and reels would evolve to not only an account with a million followers, that's incredible in and of itself, but then you guys escalated it and elevated it to bam, we got pop-ups, bam, we got a book. Like that is so aggressively devour worthy. I think that's so Thanks, dope. Man. Thanks. Appreciate that's it. Yeah. Cool. I, t- I mean, Rebecca and I definitely talk about this all the time. We, we, we reflect constantly. We're always just like, do you remember that first restaurant that we went to that Thai restaurant when we decided we wanted to start meals and reels? It's like, <laughs> it's just cr- absolutely crazy. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot of hard work just constantly. I mean, all I do is, is work at this. All I do when I talk to other people for the most part is talk about this, you know, yeah. people probably hate it, but you know, a lot of times people, I literally just went to the bank the other day and the guy was like, Oh, what do you, what do you do for work? Uh, and you know, the classic bank teller line. Yeah. And uh, I said, what, I said what it was. And then I just kept going on and on. And literally I was just like, why, why, why haven't you stopped me yet? And he was like, I'm just so, I'm so interested. Like I want to quit this job. I want to do something along the lines of like a blog or something. He's like, I've never talked to anybody that actually did it. And he's like, you seem so passionate, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, thanks, man. I think I'm just hungry. Yeah. (laughs) Dude, I think that's a big reason why you and I hit it off. Because I remember when you invited me to your guys' party, your 500K party. First of all, I was like, that's so random. This is so cool. (laughs) That was awesome. You and I, like, we share the passion for food, which I think a lot of people love food. But you and I, like, I feel like we both love content and content creation and talking about it. So I I think that's why we hit it off so much. Yeah. Yeah, we love it. I think maybe we should... uh, Maybe we, instead of love, we say we're obsessed with it. Obsessed? <laughs> I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> no, like, I am. I mean, I, uh, I have like, uh, I definitely have like ADD. So like I get very focused on something mm-hmm. and then I like can't stop. I was just like, it's my entire life. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm just constantly thinking about the next video or the next series. So we started a couple series on TikTok, which is a lot of fun for us. Um, we, we, and we've seen a lot of success with it. We have a Wings with My Wife series nice. from like the seventh episode now, um, which is a lot of fun because it incorporates both of us. And uh, and it's actually all like narration and, and like voiceovers. So it doesn't put a lot of pressure of us on us like at, at the actual restaurant. We just like eat, eat the food and be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really smart. Yeah, it's great. Um, and then I have another one called The Secret Menu Show, which I like love this show. And it's just basically kind of like we were talking about with Chipotle, just like menu hacks at different places. Nice. But I, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's awesome. I, 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 lo- I love creating content. Would you do long form like a YouTube content? I think either one of those shows could be YouTube content. Uh, yeah, so we had Wings with My Wife as a, as a YouTube show and it, and it was fairly successful. I think that my attention span is just too small <laughs> and all of ours is too small right, yeah. as of right now in the world. I, I We plan on posting more on YouTube. We have like 10,000 subscribers or something like that. Nothing crazy or anything. But I don't know. I mean, TikTok is just like blowing up the world. Uh, it really is. <laughs> so we're focusing on that. We're focusing on Instagram, of course, because that's where the major- majority of our following is. We don't really focus on Facebook too much because, you know, my mom's on there. It's dead. Uh, <laughs> Facebook is dead, dude. <laughs> yeah. So we'll probably focus on, on YouTube a little bit more in 2021, but not nearly as much as the other two it's, platforms it's the yeah. year of tiktok baby yeah, i think i think it really is that's cool so greg uh i asked you everything i wanted to ask you but i always tell my guests if there's something i didn't ask like i blew it you're like why did he bring it up <laughs> <laughs> if there's anything you want to talk about just let me know do you have a favorite uh restaurant out there at, at uh at hey, your Columbus, hometown ohio yeah um wow that's really tough i know I mean, like I, I hate that question the favorite because yeah. uh we don't have any favorites we never say favorites so yeah, I mean, and that's a, that's the thing too with my account is like people are like, why don't you do ratings? And I'm like, because it's either a nine point five or a ten, or I won't post it. Like, yeah, we're the <laughs> it would be same. the most boring. The same. Yeah, yeah um, I mean, same. Columbus does have a lot of amazing restaurants, and we have like obviously really great pizza places, but we also have like really good like there's a great Ethiopian restaurant, there's a great Ooh. yeah great Greek restaurant. There's tons of great stuff here. Um, I feel like awesome. Columbus is kind of slept on a little bit. I so, mean, I can tell it's slept on by your posts. Man, I appreciate that. Well, that was the podcast, Greg. Thank you so much for doing it. And thanks uh, for having me. Yeah, this man. Was fun. Of course. I hope you have a great rest of the day and uh, have a good one, bud. You too, man. <laughs> Later. Later.